So, it's time to talk about Skyrim. Having been released around 10 years ago as of the recording of this video, I feel like there isn't a single person who's into video games that hasn't at least heard of Skyrim. I myself have owned it on four to five different platforms for some reason. Just in case anybody doesn't know, Skyrim is the fifth game in the Elder Scrolls series of RPGs, bringing an expansive world to explore, different combat styles, hundreds of quests, and most importantly, hundreds of fully voiced NPCs to interact with. These days, it's available on every console made within the last decade, and depending on the platform, usually rather cheap. I do have a word of warning though, check the language options for the platform you wish to play on before buying. I found out the hard way that the Nintendo Switch version only has Japanese language support if you bought it from the Japanese eShop, or you know, from a shop in Japan, and I think the PlayStation and Xbox versions are probably the same. For this video, I have been playing on PC. Not to jump to the conclusion, but I would argue that playing Skyrim in Japanese has been one of the most immersive language learning experiences of my journey so far. But let's break it down and try to answer the question, can you learn Japanese with the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim? Let's get this out of the way right now. Skyrim is not appropriate for absolute beginners of Japanese. Assuming you've played it before, and who hasn't at this point, the sheer amount of vocabulary and the lack of furigana makes following along with what's being said very difficult. Even those with some experience might struggle. At the time of this video, I have somewhere between an N2 and an N1 level Japanese, and if I really focus on the dialogue, I can understand most of what is being said, and luckily any words I don't know, I can usually catch the meaning through context, both within the story and based on my many playthroughs of the game in English. One of the main reasons it's challenging is during conversations with NPCs, they will say three or more sentences with no option to pause and look up words, and no way to go back and re-listen to what was said, which is why you really must give it your full concentration. That being said, sometimes you can select the same dialogue choices over and over again, thus hopefully gaining the chance to at least hear the words you're having trouble with, and checking them in a dictionary. So if you manage to understand what someone said to you, or asked of you, you can then take your time reading and choosing which dialogue option to reply with. This can really help build a sense of real world immersion as mentioned earlier, by putting you in the shoes of the character. Though most dialogue choices don't make a huge deal of difference, some of them can change the quests a little bit. There is no furigana anywhere in the game, and I have seen a fair share of some more obscure kanji. Also, there are lots of place names, monster names, and mythical lore, which makes up a section of the game's dialogue slash content, but the remaining 90 to 95% is pretty common everyday Japanese. Making progress in Skyrim is relatively simple thanks to quest logs and markers, which generally tell you where to go and what to do, but more often than what's ideal, they are a bit vague, meaning if you didn't listen properly to the quest giver, or simply can't understand the objective text, it's very much possible to get a bit stuck. Occasionally in dungeons there are some light puzzles, which are for the most part not language based, they just require a bit of exploration to solve. There's also YouTube walkthroughs if you're truly stuck. Thankfully the main story is pretty linear, and what with all the different guilds and side quests, there are hundreds more hours worth of content to see, even if you do get stuck somewhere. Heck, even just travelling to a new town and speaking to every NPC is so much more fun and interesting than in English or your first language, when it could sometimes feel like busy work when you just want to get to the action. What I really like about playing on PC is that you can somewhat easily run some console commands and make the game easier for a casual playthrough. Something that I did almost instantly was to give myself unlimited stamina as when travelling from town to town, having to stop and catch your breath means there's no new listening material. On all versions of the game however, not just PC, you can adjust the difficulty at any time, meaning that if you get stuck in a combat sense, you can quickly overcome it without the need to grind away and waste time, unless that adds to your enjoyment that is. This leads nicely to the gaming to learning ratio. As previously mentioned, talking to NPCs, reading quest logs, and even the hundreds of in-game books, each with pages and pages of text, make for some really high efficiency immersion. However, when venturing into dungeons or traveling to a remote location on foot, you can end up spending upwards of 10 minutes just 
walking with no language stimulation. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed by a dialogue heavy quest, this can be the perfect break, but if not, it makes up a large portion of dead time. One way to make this better, I would suggest, is to travel via horse and carriage to all of the major cities in the game as soon as possible, and then fast travel thereafter. You might miss out on the occasional random encounter, but cutting down on traveling is far more beneficial in the long run. To summarize this section, if you speak to every NPC, truly listen to what they have to say, read the quest objectives and really comprehend what they're asking of you, the ratio is very high in favor of learning. The in-game books are there if you want reading practice, but I find the default font to be a little hard to read and very ugly, so I find it best to get your reading practice from real books. But hey, they're there if you want them. Okay, so let's see. New new town I haven't been to yet in this playthrough. Let's see if we can find someone to speak to. Is a kid? Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Where are your parents? Oh, they're both dead. Papa was Papa Okay, so both his parents died. His dad caught like a sickness while on a on a trip. Um, you know, that's that's you know, that's reasonable voice acting from a from a child. Probably wasn't a child with voice actor, but uh you seem you seem like you're in a rush, you seem busy, what's up what's up? Okay, so he's going to deliver some like supplies to the people working in the mine, um, so he can stay in the inn of a night time. Maybe I mean <laughs> that was from memory. I can't really remember. Um, <laughs> so I can say, uh, do you wanna do you wanna become my son? Do you wanna become my child? <laughs> Should we try it? <laughs> no, I don't have a house. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, all right. I mean, you know, you can still be my son. You can adventure with me. No, all right. Well, you know. Oh, I don't know. 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 I forgot most of the conversation, if I'm being honest. So let's just talk to this guy. Okay. Well, he doesn't want to talk. Let's talk to this woman. She seems more important. Excuse me? Okay, I'm not sure what that four character kanji means, but I'll, I'll put it in the video. Uh, yeah, so it, it seems like a bad time. What's, what's up? What's the matter? この頃夜ぐっすり眠れた人なんか癒やしないわ。同じ悪夢を繰り返し見てるのよ。疲れじゃなければ怒り。怒りじゃないなら恐れね。おかげで秩序を保つのが大変になったわ。マーラが司祭
Bye. Um, so we didn't get any quests from that, but you know, we got some interesting background information. Let's uh, chat to this woman. Okay, so she's talking about her dreams. Everyone's talking about their dreams. What about this guy? He's got a story. Mm. Okay, so everyone's just talking about drinking and sleeping and nightmares. Like, I guess that's that's this town's story. People can't sleep. Uh, they're very unhappy. Let's uh, chat to these people. She's tired. Uh, we didn't get a quest, but everyone's talking about nightmares and no sleep, right? So it's clearly like a theme with this town, and because we heard the words over and over again, right? We got we heard like nemure night and akumu, nemure night akumu, right? Skareru, skareta. Everyone said the same kind of thing, so you know you hear these words again and again, and here's the context, right? Everyone looks sad, everyone looks tired, um, so you know you're not going to forget those words. I think that's enough of this short little example section. Do you like exploring new worlds, listening and understanding to real conversations, and slaying dragons? If so, then I feel like Skyrim is a lot of fun. Some of the game systems and mechanics feel a bit outdated at this point, but it still holds up really well. There's a reason it's playable on everything from Xbox 360s to smart fridges. You can choose to play with swords and shields, bows and arrows, magic, or a mix of any of those styles. So I would say you can find a playstyle that you find fun. Personally, I play the whole game with a bow and arrow in stealth mode, so I can one-shot unsuspecting bandits and get back to the quest dialogues as soon as possible. But if you prefer your Japanese learning games to be a bit more mm, Japanese, then you may not enjoy Skyrim as much, as it's very much an RPG as opposed to a JRPG. At the end of the day, it's a game for a Western audience which has been translated into Japanese. So from time to time, you can encounter some strange phrases or the subtitles don't 100% match up with the audio. However, these are very rare and it doesn't really make an impact on the fun that is this 100 hour plus game. Most modern versions of the game come with all the DLC expansions too, bringing new stories and regions which I think makes it very worthwhile, especially for the low price tag. So, Skyrim is a game with hundreds of hours of fully voiced dialogue, thousands of lines of Japanese text, hundreds of quests to take on and complete, and it's available for just a couple of pounds, dollars, euros, or a few hundred yen, available on nearly every platform under the sun. So, can you learn Japanese with The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim? Yes, of course, but only if you have put in some groundwork already to have a solid foundation in Japanese. If you can understand 50 to 70% of what is said, I think it's a fantastic resource to learn new and sometimes more obscure words in context, all while solidifying everything you've learned before. However, if this is your first or one of your first games in Japanese, I might suggest going with a different game series for a while until you feel like you can take on this mighty challenge. If you'd like recommendation for something else to play in Japanese, please check out my other videos. If you have any suggestions of your own, or feel like you have some tips on getting the most out of Skyrim in Japanese, please let us know in the comments below. Also be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your language learning friends. Thanks for watching, I've been Joe from Zento, bye!